السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن شيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل له له ومن يضلل فلا حادي له له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن ولا ولا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله Brothers and sisters, today we're going to talk about one of the five pillars of Islam, that is the Shahada. What are the conditions of Shahada? The famous followers, Wahib ibn Munabbi, was once asked, Isn't the statement of La ilaha illallah the key to paradise? He answered, Yes, but every key has ridges. If you come with the key that has the right ridges, it's going to open the right door for you. Some people have the tendency to take one hadith or Quranic verse and then based on that text, they will make some conclusions that for example, who, whoever simply says La ilaha illallah will enter paradise. We should all realize that all of the Quran and Sunnah complement each other and explain one another. To find the correct opinion on any one question, one must bring together all of the related verses and hadith and see what is the Islamic position on that question. So when we study the Quran and Sunnah of Prophet, peace be upon him, we will find that there are certain conditions of La ilaha illallah. It is important that all of us make sure that we meet these conditions in our lives so that by Allah's mercy, the door of paradise will be opened for us by our key of La ilaha illallah. I'm going to talk about eight conditions. The first of them is knowledge. One must understand what the Shahada is denying and what it is affirming. One must know the false God whom one is rejecting and at the same time one must have the right knowledge about Allah. One cannot make a testimony about something that one does not have knowledge about. How do we know about Allah? By considering His creation and through what He has said about Himself and what His Prophet peace be upon Him told us. Today there are many Muslims who think that there is nothing wrong with secularism. Many of these Muslims utter the Shahada repeatedly and pray five times a day. Yet they see nothing wrong with accepting a lawgiver other than Allah. What kind of Shahada are these people making? The second point is certainty. The second condition of the Shahada is certainty or Al-Yaqeen. This is the opposite of doubt. We must in our hearts be absolutely certain of the truth of the Shahada. Our hearts must not be wavering in any way after we have testified to the truth. Allah described the believers in the Quran as those who have belief in Allah and then their hearts waves not. The true believers are those who believe in Allah and His Messenger and afterward doubt not but strive with their wealth and their lives in the cause of Allah. Such are the sincere. Similarly, the Messenger of Allah said, No one meets Allah with the testimony that there is none worthy of worship but Allah, and I am the Messenger of Allah, and He has no doubt about the statement except that He will enter paradise. Many scholars have stated that the diseases of the hearts, the doubts and suspicion that one allows into one's hearts are more dangerous for a person, person's fate than lusts and desires. Lust and desires may be satisfied at some time, yet the person still knows them to be wrong and then he may repent and give up the bad deed. On the other hand, doubt and suspicion may linger in the heart with no cure until the person finally leaves Islam entirely or continues to practice Islam while in fact in his heart he does not have the true faith. The greatest counterforce that can defeat doubts after the bounty and guidance of Allah is sound knowledge, ilm and the understanding of religion. It is through the sound knowledge of Quran and Sunnah that most of these doubts will be removed. And as one studies and learns about his certainty, the Iman will be firmer and firmer and firmer. Allah says in Surah Fatir, it is only those who have knowledge among his slaves that fear Allah. So every Muslim should do his best to safeguard himself from doubts and remain away from the sources especially if a person does not have the knowledge to refute such doubts and misconceptions. Hence, if a person has an associate or a friend, even if he be a Muslim friend or is always making him doubt Allah or the religion, then he should remain away from that person in order to safeguard his own religion. Sometimes we might read or listen to some criticism of Islam written or said by someone who is an enemy of Islam. And if we do not know or deen well, we might be affected by such misconception and start to have doubts. When one realizes how doubt can affect people badly, 
especially those who do not have the knowledge and those who are weak in iman one understands why islam has decreed such a severe punishment for apostasy especially when publicized one is excused for evil thoughts of the hearts as long as they do not take a firm route abu huraira razi allah ta'ala anha related that some people from amongst the companions of prophet peace be upon him came to him and said we perceive in our minds that which every one of us considers too great to express he said have you perceived it they said yes he said that is a manifest faith muslim the fact that they perceived the stir of the evil and realized its gravity to the extent that they were afraid to speak about it bears testimony to their deep rooted faith in another hadith the messenger of allah peace be upon him said shaitan comes to one of you and says who created the heaven who created the earth till the questions comes who created your lord he who find himself in such situation would say i affirm my faith in allah i affirm my faith in allah in another version of the hadith shaitan comes to one of you and says who created this and that till he questions who created your lord when he reaches that one should seek refuge in allah and drive away such thought the third point i'm going to talk about is acceptance the third conditions of la ilaha illallah is acceptance after a person has the knowledge of and of certainty in the shahada then this must be followed by acceptance with the tongue and the heart of whatever the shahada implies whoever refuses to accept the shahada and its implication then he is a disbeliever one must believe in whatever is stated by allah in the quran and whatever stated by prophet without any right to choose what one wants to believe and what one wants to reject allah says in the quran do you believe in the part of the book and reject part of it and what is the reward of those who do but disgrace in the life of the world and on the day of judgment they will be consigned to the most grievous punishment some muslims if they do not like what is stated in a verse of the quran they reinterpret it to their liking if they do not like what is stated in the hadith they simply say that the hadith must not be authentic although they are not scholars this behavior is contrary to the behavior of true muslims it is dangerous although it is not necessarily the same as the complete refusal of acceptance of the truth submission and compliance the fourth condition of shahada is submission and compliance this means fulfilling the requirements of the shahada with our actions allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has clearly made it a condition of faith that one submits to the judgment of allah and that of his messenger in one's life but nay by your lord they will not truly believe until they make you judge of what is in dispute between them and find within themselves no dislike of that which you decide and submit with full submission our shahada must be realized and implemented in our hearts tongues and actions in our hearts we must have love for allah fear of allah and hope in him with our tongues we must testify to the shahada and use our tongues in saying and spreading good and forbidding evil with our actions we must implement what the testimony of faith requires from us what is the minimum of submission and compliance that is required from a person beyond which there cannot be any claim of faith the minimum condition is the five daily prayers that's one of the pillars of islam whoever does not perform at least the five daily prayers has gone beyond the limit that is acceptable I ask Allah to guide us all on the right path. Sincerity and truthfulness. The fifth condition of la ilaha illallah is sincerity and truthfulness. This means that when one says the shahada one must do so solely for the sake of allah one must not do it for any other reason one must not do it for anyone else's sake this is something that we should all think about especially those who grew up in a muslim families and were born muslims we should make it very clear to ourselves that we are muslims only for the sake of allah we are not muslims for the sake of our parents our friends or our community There are some who say the testimony of faith yet they are not saying it honestly they do not believe in it they are simply saying it in order to protect themselves or to get some gain from doing so these are the hypocrites the prophet said no one bears testimony that there is none worthy of worship except allah sincerely from his heart except that allah make the hellfire forbidden for him 
The sixth condition of the Shahada is love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the love of His Messenger, peace be upon Him. In Islam, love of Allah is expressed by total obedience to Him. The true believers, the one who meets the condition of the Shahada, puts no one whatsoever as an equal to Allah in His love. Allah says, There are among men those who take other beside Allah as equal to Him. They love them as they should only love Allah. But those who believe have much greater love for Allah. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, Whoever has three characteristics has tested the sweetness of faith. The first of, the first of these is that he loves Allah and his messenger more than he loves anyone else. He, peace be upon him, also said, None of you is a true believer until I become more beloved to him than his child, his father and the hold of mankind. Love of the Prophet, peace be upon him, like that of Allah, is also expressed by obedience of his commands. It, if one allows the love of anything or anyone to come between himself and Allah, then he has worshipped that thing. In this way, money can become one God, or even one's desire could become a God. The seventh condition of Shahada is denying every other object of worship. In Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah clearly reminds us of this important aspect of the Shahada. And he who rejects false deities and believes in Allah has gaps a firm handhold which will never break. Although this condition should be obvious for everyone who says the word of Shahada, you can still find Muslims who say the testimony and then make acts of worship for being or things other than Allah. For example, you will find some who go to the graves and perform acts of worship to those who are in the graves. These people are reliant on us to make dua for them. How can they bring us some good? The eighth condition of Shahada is one's adherence to the Shahada until one's death. This is a must if the Shahada is to mean anything for you in the Akhirah. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, By Allah, whom there is no God other than him, one of you continues to do actions of the people of paradise until there is between him and it a cubit, then what has been decreed for him will come to pass, and he will do the actions of the people of the fire, so enter it. This hadith confirms that the state of a man is unchangeable as a person, will be judged according to to the actions and belief that he or she has at the end of his or her life. All of us must be aware of this aspect of our lives. Although we may be practicing Islam today, we have to be very careful not to allow ourselves to be taken away from Islam in the future. We must be aware of those things which may deviate us from the straight path. Some of these things are power, honor, social status, wealth, whims, desires, association with evil friends, or evil spouses and children. Some means which Allah help a Muslim to stay in the straight path are muhasabah, constant checking on oneself and one actions of what we are doing because Allah is always watching. Mujahada, striving to improve oneself. Completely boycotting places of corruption, keeping good company, remembrance of Allah, reciting the Quran and other dhikr, and dua, asking Allah continuously to protect us from evil men and evil jinn. The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon it, taught us to supplicate, O turner of hearts, make my heart firm in your religion. So it is important that we fulfill and meet these requirements of the Shahada in our lives, not just enumerate them and code them. When we fulfill them, then by the grace of Allah, we can look forward to meeting in Allah in the hereafter while He is pleased with us.